It's your boy, the one with the scar in space, your boy Scarface. And today we got another episode for you guys. Thank you guys so much for always tuning in, always checking out the podcast, always subscribing, leaving a thumbs up, like wherever you're listening to uh, Spotify, YouTube, leave us a thumbs up. It, it really does help the podcast out. Uh, share it with your friends and things like that. So shout out to everyone who keeps listening every week. Uh, your support is, is, is amazing. Shout out to the people who come over from TikTok. And also, if you want to keep supporting the podcast, I do got Susia necklaces coming in soon, uh, so it's definitely t- uh, stay tuned for that. Stepdaddy in training, hoodies, shirts, link is in the bio. And we also do sell pins also in the bio as well, so definitely check those out. Uh, and shout out to everyone who has purchased something. I, I really do appreciate it. You guys are amazing. So today, what I actually wanted to get into is long-distance relationships. Now, People who have followed me on on, on TikTok, uh, Instagram, and things like that. If you haven't followed me, link is in the bio. I I prefer to date people long distance, and I'll tell you why. You know, and before I get into the pros and cons, you get to meet somebody. You probably like, like for example, if I start dating somebody here, somebody's gonna feed them information, not in a bad way, just like. Oh, he's a bad person. Oh, this, oh, that. Just because people around your city, a city gets small, right? It doesn't matter where you're at. And then they start feeding information uh, that's unnecessary, you know? And just because, for example, if you were talking to a girl before, and then all of a sudden you start talking to another girl because that it, that other situation didn't work out, people were like, you believe he was talking to so and so before. You know, like, and this and that. It's just unnecessary drama. And on top of that, ex, I can't, I can't deal with exes. Like, exes don't know how to get over their 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 exes. You know what I mean? Like, they're always trying to ruin shit. They're always trying to, you know, uh, y'all y'all got a problem. You know, <laughs> you guys going back back and forth with exes and stuff like that. So, what I learned too is also that I learned to date. Oh, I love dating people who are not from here, just because again. You're meeting this person, you know absolutely nothing about them. They know absolutely nothing about you. And you can go from there. It's like a clean slate. Again, I've done my shadiness, but I'm not hiding anything, right? Uh, and then it's it's easier to deal with exes when they don't know you. You know what I mean? Like, they know nothing about you. They don't know this. They don't know that. You're not boys. Uh, so you don't run into that issue as well. So that's why I, another reason. There's plenty of other reasons. Again, like you get to meet somebody completely somewhere else. Uh, but at the same time, I always say that you have to be secure and confident with yourself because if you're not, you're going to think that this person is cheating all the time or out being shady and things like that. And you don't want to be sitting like living like that. So that's also uh, something that you have to deal with and you have to be aware of. So but I all, uh, but I did make a list. The pros and cons of dating long distance. And we're going to go through the pros first. So if you want to listen to the, I mean, it's going to be a great episode for you guys. So the first pro pro is personal growth. Long distance relationships can foster personal growth as individuals learn to communicate effectively, manage time and maintain independence. And I really like this one because I always say this before, like you, you get to know this person. It's not so much like, hey, let's meet up, let's hook up. And then that's it. You know, it's like. Let's get to know each other before, like, you have to get to know this person a little bit more. Communication is, you have to have a little bit more communication with that person. It's not just like, we meet up, we hook up, and then that's it. You know what I mean? Like, people have been there and done that. Uh, here, you you actually have that personal growth with each other, like, uh, and you learn how to, like, to me, it really helped trusting that other person, if that makes sense, like, I'm not sitting here thinking like this person is cheating on me. They're doing this. They're doing that. They're being shady. I'm just more like uh, they're doing their thing. I'm doing my thing. As long as I'm not doing anything bad, karma's not going to come back and bite me in the ass. And uh, and the same goes for them. So uh, there's that. The personal growth, it helps you grow a lot. Number two that we have is deep emotional connection. Often the distance can lead to more meaningful communication, emotional bonding as partners prioritize sharing thoughts and feelings. And this is what I mean. Like you, you get to know this person on a deeper level. Like it's not just, again, like 
You have to actually have a conversation with this person. You have to get to know this person. You have to talk to them. You're going to talk to them a little bit more than usual. You're going to uh, try to keep the conversations a little bit more interesting than usual because this person is far. And if you want to keep their interest, obviously, you, you have to, you know, uh, have that communication. OK, so I always say, like, it helps you build that connection with that person a lot more, you know, and a lot deeper. And it's not just, you know, uh, it becomes more than just a physical attraction. It becomes like an emotional attractment, you know, you like you start to like how this person is, you know. Um, so that's a that's a big one for me is like I've learned that you actually get to know this person on a deeper level than you would somebody just around town or something like that. So uh, that's something that I really enjoyed is actually getting to know the person before like you even invest too much time into the person, you know, because uh, um, sometimes you you think you're. You're barely getting to know somebody. You're not having these type of conversations. You're just more like seeing each other all the time. And then you get comfortable. And then you come to find out they're really not that interesting. Uh, but this way you can find out if you're actually interested in this person. See what they're about. And, you know, get to like them for them. You know, because if, if say I'm putting on a front, right? That front is only going to last so long until like finally I'm like, yeah, whatever. You know, I'm tired of being like this. Uh, I'm going to be how I really am. So. The next one we have is enhanced communication skills. Couples in long distance relationships tend to develop strong communication skills, including active listening and expressing emotions clearly. And this goes back to the first one. You get to know this person on a deeper level. And that's a big thing for me now. Before I really didn't give a fuck. Now it's it's that's something I really do enjoy is getting to know the person for that person. And to see if they're actually interesting, because some people will say they're super interesting. But once you start talking to them, you can tell they're, they're, they're boring. They're not very interesting. Like, yeah, you could probably go out without them. <laughs> uh, so there's also that. That's why, again, I've really enjoyed getting to know people before I even actually get to meet them. Right. So you get to know them a little bit more. They get to know me a little bit more. That way, when you meet them, it's not that awkward. Yeah, it's still nerve wracking, kind of anxious, but you kind of know this person already, if that makes sense. Like you kind of know this person. So you're not really just going in there trying to figure out who they are there. You know, you you've already gotten to know them a little bit and maybe already made those like inside jokes, communicated a little bit, like found out about each other a little bit more. That way, when you meet, it's not as awkward or as like nerve-wracking you you just start talking you're like oh shit like this person is that person you know so that's also cool and it helps with communication because again if you're someone people always say they're into communication they want someone who communicates and if you can't communicate with somebody who's long distance imagine how they are in person you know yeah they'll be all great and stuff just because probably they want to hook up with you but if this is how you're going to find out right away how they communicate you know are they interesting do they like try to ch talk with you. Like how are their behaviors? Like I'm busy all the time, but like if I'm talking to somebody, I always tell them, Hey, like I'm going to be doing this. I'll message you a little bit later. And if they tell me the same thing, then that's perfectly fine. That's good communication skills right there. Instead of just being like disappearing for hours on end. And then all of a sudden be like, Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> so, um, your, your communication enhances and and I've seen it for myself too. Like I'm, I, I communicate a lot better with people, not just uh, someone I'm talking to, just everybody, like friends, family, uh, clients, you name it. Like just your communications get your your communication skills tend to develop a lot more with a long distance relationship or getting or talking to people that you're probably not going to meet for a little bit just because you guys are far away, uh, and depending on how far away you are too. And so we have number four, exciting visits, reuniting after a time apart can be incredibly rewarding and create special memories. The anticipation of seeing each other can keep the relationship exciting. Yes, very much so. Because I remember when I would see my ex, I would get all excited because I hadn't seen her in a while. You know, it'd been maybe like a month, two months, and then you're going to go and see them. And then like just that time together is just way more um I've enjoyed it a lot more because like when you get to see somebody all the time, like, yes, it, yeah, it's cool having quality time with that person, but 
that feeling you get when you haven't seen this person in a while and then you like gonna see them it's exciting you and then like when you're there you're super focused on them instead of just being like distracted and things like that you're like i'm gonna go see this person and i'm gonna really like focus on her just because i haven't seen her in a minute you know and i really want to see her uh so it, it does make the 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 visits very exciting uh and like vice versa and i'm sure she felt the same way when she was like coming here for the first time and when she was here uh because we would go back and forth and so and like it, you would do you would create a lot more memories that way because you're always doing something you're always up to something it's it's not so much just like you know when you invite you get invited or you invite or go over to your bf's house girlfriend's house you guys just like lay around and not really do anything right like a lot of people have done that but when you're like all right we're gonna go i'm gonna go over we're gonna do this we're gonna do that and like you have like this whole thing that you want to do with this person because you haven't seen him in a while so and that's also been something that i really enjoyed is all and also like if you go somewhere you've never been to like that's it's a really cool experience to not only get to know somebody new or see somebody new is to get to know a new place new location somewhere you probably wouldn't have gone but now since you're talking to this person it's somewhere that you've gone to visit and vice versa they came to wherever you're from so uh that's definitely a, been a huge plus for myself individual pursuits partners have the opportunity to pursue personal goals and interests without sacrificing time spent together and this is like a huge one i talk about all the time you're going to have all this extra time because, again, relationships take a lot of effort and time invested and, and, and just things like that. But when you when you like are, are, are separated, right, like you're back where you're from, she's over where she's from. Now you have more time to focus on things that you've been wanting to do instead of like having to invest all your time to this person. So like I get super busy and. And it's cool that I, I'm able to communicate with whoever, but then also get a lot of my shit done without having someone being there being like, come see me. I need to see you. Like, what are you doing? Like, let's hang out. Let's talk, you know, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, this gives you time to focus on just things that you've wanted to do. And same for that person, you know, because when you when you can have time to focus on what you want to do, like it can grow. And again, like it's a little bit more difficult when you live close to that person because yeah like i said it's cool seeing that person but sometimes when you see that person a lot a lot of this other stuff that you wanted to do doesn't get done that's why like a lot of people stop pursuing something or never pursue a career or a, a side hustle or anything like that because they've been invest investing their time into this person you know and then it, later on they're like fuck i should have just done my thing but this gives you the opportunity to both still do your thing you know still hustle still grind but then when you guys see each other, it's all about you guys, like hanging out, seeing each other, talking to each other, uh, spending that quality time together. And it's even more like enjoyable, I think. And so and that, that's a big thing for me. Like I have a hard time sacrificing like this, my time, meaning like, yes, I like to hang out with girls uh, or whoever like I'm talking to and like spend that time with them. But I also don't want to feel like. I'm sacrificing what I'm doing and, and the stuff that I got going on because I'm trying to talk to this person. You know, this way I've I found it very enjoyable for myself. So like where I can get a lot of things done, you know, I can get a lot of things done. They can get a lot of things done and you don't feel like you're sacrificing like your career, your your side hustle or whatever. Just the things that you like to do, you know, uh, of course, eventually I always say like conversation is going to happen where you have to move or she has to move, like whatever the case may be, like coming closer is something that's going to have to happen. It's not going to be, It's again, it's not going to be long distance forever. It's only going to be long distance for a period of time, but then eventually that has to change because you can't be away from that person for that long. Okay. So again, I had that conversation with an ex and I was preparing myself to actually make the move. Not a lot of people know about that, but I was preparing myself to make that move to Texas uh, just so I could be a little bit closer to her uh, and ended up not working out. But uh, but again, I know that that's coming. Either they're going to have to move or you're going to have to move depending on your guys' situation. So just be aware of that. Now, we're going to get into the, some of the cons of 
uh, being long distance. Okay. Some of the cons before I get into this, just you, you, you have to be secure and not a jealous person to a point because you can't, th- you can't be assuming that this person is cheating on you all the time, messing around all the time, uh, out doing shady things all the time and vice versa. You know, you don't want someone who's thinking that you're doing all the shady stuff at the same, uh, like at the same time, because then it's not going to work out because then the arguments are going to happen. Like you're out doing this, you're doing that, you're doing this. In reality, you're not, you're just like, what the fuck? Like, how am I doing that when I'm not, you know, cause that's something I ran into an ex. Like it was, I was cheating on everybody or I was cheating with her with everybody. Like <laughs> it was just crazy, wild, stupid. Uh, so that's why I say like, you have, that's one of the downfalls is like, it's really hard to find somebody who's pretty secure with themselves because most people say they are, but then until you start to get to know this person and then you feel, you know, are they out doing shady stuff or, and like, imagine being in my shoes, like where I'm doing a lot of this content and I'm talking to somebody I wouldn't want, like, I'm, I try to make them feel like, um, reassure that I'm like just talking to them and things like that. But just some people may not feel like that. It doesn't matter what you say or it doesn't matter what you say or do like, they're going to feel like that. That's something that they need to fix within. So, uh, there's also that. So let's get into the cons limited physical intimacy. The lack of physical proximity can be challenging for some couples as they miss out on everyday physical contact and intimacy. So again, you know, this is, it, but this is why I say like long distance should only be temporary. I'm not talking about like two, three years, like four, no, temp, excuse me, temporary is like, you get to know this person, you see how things go. But then eventually I would say about the year mark that you guys have to figure out like what's going to happen because this relationship cannot continue being separate like that for so long. So, um, because yes, some, like I like, I'm a, I'm a huge physical touch type of person. Uh, and then there's also like people who love quality time. And I get that. Uh, and if you're willing to sacrifice in that in the beginning, and then that's why I said like things should only be temporary. So this can be a downfall for a lot of people just because that's what they, you know, a lot of people like, uh, I know they, they, one of their love languages is quality time. And you're going to be missing out a lot on that, uh, being long distance. Because you're the the most quality time, I would say, like if you guys call each other, FaceTime each other or something like that, it's it's a little bit different than actually being in that same room with that person. And the lack of intimacy, like, of course, like you want to be with this person and like you crave being with this person. So uh, so just know that that's something that you will have to sacrifice in the beginning, you know, but I'm not saying that's what that's why I say, like. Long distance should only be temporary. It shouldn't be that long. Communication challenges. Misunderstanding may arise due to reliance on communication through technology, feeling of feelings of frustration and loneliness. This is why, like, it's a pro and a con, like, but it depends on how you are as a person. Like, if you're a great communication person, like, you can communicate well with whoever you're talking to, then it's going to be a little bit easier. This is why I say, like, communication is is, is crucial uh, because... Um, the people who can't communicate that well are going to be possibly like, say they go, they disappear for a while. And then all of a sudden, like, she's freaking out because like, what happened? How how come he's not messaging me? Like, this isn't that. And then later on, it's like, oh, I forgot to check my, like, I was doing this, you know, but instead of you could have, but how do you know? It's not like you could have went and checked. Right. Um, but it's all about communicating and, and, and telling that person like, Hey, me, I'm, I'm big on that. I'll be like, Hey, I'm going to be doing this. I'll message you a little bit later. And you know, that's my thing. And I, I would hope that that person that I'm talking to is a similar because that's, uh, that's something like big for me is like, I would also want that person to communicate those type of things with me. Uh, and I'm, and that's going to help with the communication challenges. Like if you're, um, if you can communicate well with that person, it all comes down how it is in the beginning. Cause if it sucks in the beginning, it's going to suck later on. Uh, if you're good at, at communication in the beginning, it's going to, it's going to lead to a great type of like communication, uh, boundaries between you, you know, and I'm huge on that. Like, uh, like if I'm talking to somebody, I'll, I'll tell them like, Hey, I'm going to be doing this and I'll message you later. 
and they'll be like, oh, dang, like, well, I would hope that they feel like, oh, dang, he's actually like, he's telling me he's going to do this. He's going to message me later. And like, that's great communication skills right there. Like, instead of just like disappearing for a while and then all of a sudden like, what happened? <laughs> you know? Uh, so that's, that's definitely a, a pro and a con. Number three, times, time zone differences. Coordination can be difficult to partners uh, if partners are in different time zones, making it challenging to find mutually convenient times to connect. I mean, this has never been an issue for me, like time zones. Uh, it could be. I mean, if you guys are overseas, that's a whole I've never done that overseas. OK, that would be a whole different level of challenges. And what I do overseas, probably not just because, again, it, it's already difficult long distance. So imagine it being overseas, like completely different time zones. Like when it's day over there, it's night over here, you know, like and things like that. So uh, I, again, I've never ran into time zones differences. Like I'm in Idaho, right? East coast, two hours ahead. West coast, I think they're an hour behind. You know what I mean? Like, so there's that, just that small difference. There's plenty of time to connect, you know, you just got to make it work and you got to want to make it work. Uh, so time zones, it ha has nothing, has never been an issue for me, but I know some people who are from here who've like gone on their missions and then like to like Brazil and stuff like that. So who knows what time zone they're in. Right. Uh, so it, it can be difficult. It can be difficult, uh, trying to connect that way. Um, so just be aware of that. So like if they're overseas, it's going to be a lot harder than just here locally what i mean locally is just here in the u.s so number four social isolation long distance partners may feel isolated from each other's social circles leading to feeling of loneliness and jealousy and i can see this but this again this is why i always like emphasize it like long distance should only be temporary like it's not and temporary i can i said it like as soon as you guys hit a year mark you you guys have been together for quite a while and now you have to have that conversation. It's like, what are we going to do? Let's plan on this. That way we can be closer together because being far away like that is going to cost things like that. And like, imagine she's going out with her friends and they bring their man. And now they're like, fuck, like this dude's not even here. It would be nice to invite him and go and hang out. So again, see, like you're not involved in those social circles, but you need to, again, this is a sacrifice you have to make in the beginning. You know, if you really want to make it work with this person. So just think about that. Uh, again, I always emphasize it. Long distance should only be temporary. Do not think that this is going to be a long term play here because the longer it goes, the less likely it's going to work. And then the more likely that one of the par partners is going to find somebody else and just ixnay you. <laughs> Number five is financial strain. Visiting each other regularly or relocating can be costly, adding financial strain to the relationship. Now, yes, but it also depends on your line of work. You know, if you can, for example, I would go to Texas, had some gigs out there. I would work, right? I would go and do some work out there. And basically I was still working. Yeah, I had to pay for a flight, but if you, buy ahead of time it's not super costly you know what i mean like it's not crazy expensive uh it just yes if you're always going somewhere and then you're always uh, like say you're going somewhere and getting an airbnb each time or a hotel cars like all that stuff yes that does get expensive but once you get to know this person it should be like she's coming over here and, and hanging out with me or like being here with me staying with me uh i pick her up drive her around or whatever the case right that's how it should be and vice versa. Um, so again, if you, depending on your job too, like some people have a remote job, so it's a little bit easier. Uh, again, mine's not so much remote, remote, but it can be remote. You know, if I have everything filmed that I need to film and just editing, then I can totally do that wherever I'm at. Uh, but if it's uh, like, if you have a type of job where you have to be there, then that's a little bit different just because you're always having to ask for maybe for time off or, or or things like that. So just definitely be aware of that. And it would get costly. Like, again, if that's all you're doing, because you can find a flight to almost anywhere in the United States, depending on when you purchase it from anywhere from like 150 bucks 
to like 250, 300 bucks, right? And that's something doable because like just go out to eat a little bit less. Um, don't spend your money on stupid shit a little bit less. Put some money aside. Um, like for me, like I have money aside for like equipment fund. You could have like a vacation fund. Uh, I signed up for Rocket Money. I don't know if you guys ha have that uh, um, app. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do on there. And then on there, I just put, I already have, it's weird because I have like certain places where it withdraws money out of my accounts just automatically. So one, to save money. Like I have a savings where it pulls money automatically and it goes into there. I have my uh, stocks where it pulls money automatically and goes into there. Um, and now I have another savings where it's been pulling money also and putting money into there. That one's weekly. The other two are monthly. And then I have another one that pulls out monthly as well. But you see, like, it's little things like that. And it's 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 funny how it adds up. Like, say you put aside $75 each check. You're not going to miss $75. If you can't put $75 away from a check, you need to figure out your financial situation because, again, you can put $75 away. You know, $75 one check, $75 another check. Guess what? Now you have 150 bucks. And if you need a little bit more, do a side hustle, something, sell some stuff online. And then guess what? You just made up the money. And then if you're constantly putting $75 away on each paycheck, then uh, it's constantly, you know, saving up for, for her. Like, cause then you go and then she can come while she was saving her money. You know, now she can come. And while she was here and, and like you guys spent some time this whole time, you've been saving money. So now you can go. And while she's saving, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's not hard. You can make things work. It's just when people don't save the money and then they just boom, spend this much. I'm going to go this time, this time. And that shit adds up. Like I, like the first time I met up with my uh, ex, uh, our first date and everything, it was, it wasn't actually in, in Denver. I had to get a uh, Airbnb car. Uh, I actually drove there. I didn't fly to that one. Uh, Cause I'd never driven there. And I was like, Oh, let me drive. It might not be, be that bad. It was actually that bad. I fucking hate it. I hate driving long distance. Uh, never again. <laughs> so we met there, but you know what I mean? Like, and then I spent, uh, not only that, like you had to spend like on the day dates and stuff like that, which I'm not complaining because you're getting to know somebody is like a date. Right. Um, uh, but that's a lot all at once. And if you have to keep doing that over and over, then I can see why it would get like super expensive, stupid expensive. Uh, and, it would turn people away, but there's ways to do it smart. <laughs> um, of course, that first initial meeting, you might have to spend that much money, you know, to because th this person is not just going to be like, yeah, stay in my house. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you don't know the person. Uh, but once you get to know them, they'll be a, a little bit more comfortable with you and then be willing to stay with you. Uh, and depending on how you guys are, I mean, one, I got what, two bedrooms here and then the living room, but uh, one of the rooms is my TikTok studio and podcast studio. So that'd be a little bit more difficult. Uh, but you know what I mean? Like if you're not on the intimacy level yet, like you can, you know, not have to stay in the same room if you feel comfortable with it. You know what I mean? Like there's ways to make shit happen. It's it, people overthink it and just make it a lot more difficult than it should be. So again, those are some of the pros and cons. I mean, everybody has their, again, like if, it's also difficult too, because like, say you meet somebody and what if they're in a relationship already, but you don't know that because you're not from there. You know, you also run into those risks, but you're going to run into those risks dating somebody or where you're from too. Like all these risks are the same. Like it's not just because they live far away. Uh, is, is it going to be easier to hide because they're far away? Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't mean it won't happen. People, they're like, oh, I was dating this guy for this long and found out that he had a whole nother relationship and kids with this other girl and they lived locally. <laughs> so if they're going to cheat or if they're going to be shady, they're going to do it regardless locally, long distance, uh, if that's what they want to do. But if they actually want to get to know you, it doesn't matter if you're locally long distance, they're going to try to get to know you no matter what they can do. So just be uh, aware of that and just know that it's, there's no perfect way to navigate a long distance relationship. It's more like try it and navigate through any issues if they arise and if they and if you can then imagine like it's so cool to me being able to meet somebody not from your state from a complete different area someone who like you can go over there and just be you 
no one's going to feed them stupid information. Like, for example, I remember I, uh, a while back ago here, I, I was talking to a girl, didn't work out. And then I started talking to a different girl. And now, like, other people were like, did you know he was talking to so-and-so? Did you know he was out on a date with so-and-so? Like, information that did not need to be feed to this person. Like, why was that any relevant information that this girl needs to know? Because she would be like, so-and-so said this. And I'd be like, oh, fucking stupid. You know, like, what, what that was only brought up because they wanted you guys to start some sort of drama or not be together. You know, there's always those people like, oh, I'm going to go tell them this information, even though I should have just shut the fuck up and not got involved in their relationship and just let them do their thing or whatever they got going on. And, but instead, some people are going to be like, guess who I saw him with? Guess what he was doing? I saw him on a date with this. No, who gives a fuck? <laughs> If you're single, do single shit. If you're in a relationship, don't be doing single shit. Like, basically. Um, so, But you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to worry about those issues. And also, like, dealing with exes when it's long distance is way easier. Because they don't know you. You don't know them. So, it's not like they can be, like, we're boys. Or they can, like, come and mess around with you. Like, I remember I was talking to a girl and her ex showed up to the gym trying to fight me because... He couldn't get over his ex, you know. Uh, so you won't run into those type of issues because they're like, well, I don't know where the fuck he lives. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so you don't have to deal with it. Uh, so it's a lot easier dealing with uh, exes because uh, I've never really dealt with anybody's exes. You know, one time I did have to because a big thing for me was like, don't message her message about the kids. Whatever you got to do about the kids. Cool. I understand you guys got to co-parent but don't ask her how she's doing. That's my job. It's my job to worry how she's doing. You know, how's her day going and things like that. That's me. That's not you. You no longer are responsible for that. That's responsibility of me, you know? And I basically told them that. I was like, hey, like, if you're going to message her, it's going to be about the kids and that that's it. Telling her, like I was straight up, telling her how her day is going and things like that. That's not going to fly with me. I was like, I'm, I worry about that. Not you. You had your chance. This is me. And he ba he didn't respond, obviously, and he stopped after that. So, but again, uh, you know, I wanted to do this because uh, every time I do the TikTok lives, people are always like, what do you think about this? Like long distance, long distance that. So I was like, let's do a whole podcast episode on it because I don't think I've done a whole podcast episode on long distance. And it's something that, again, I enjoy meeting new people that aren't from here just because I've had so much better experiences than dating people here. <laughs> uh, so, and I'm, I'm, I'm in that position where I can just leave. Like, I don't, I'm not married. Obviously I don't have kids that are just like, Oh no, you can't leave anywhere. So moving for me would be a little bit easier if it came down to that, or if it came down to that person coming here, like, um, like, and especially what I do, you can, you can pick up somewhere else and start getting like the ball rolling. Um, so, you know, there's definitely a lot of things to think about when you're, if you're getting into it, but just know, uh, the biggest thing for me is like, be confident and secure with yourself and also have great communication skills because that right there, those pillars are going to help this long distance relationship. And if any of those are out of whack, it might lead to a difficult, you know, uh, long distance relationship. So, and again, remember if they're going to cheat, they're going to cheat regardless you, either if you're in person, uh, or like live locally or live long distance. Like it doesn't matter. They're, they're going to do it regardless. So just keep aware of, stay aware of that and just things to think about. So anyways, thank you guys for always listening. Go and follow my Instagram, uh, TikTok. I'm sure a lot of you guys came over from TikTok. That's where a lot of the clips do very well. And then come over here. So definitely follow. Everything is linked in the bio. Susie necklaces are coming soon. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me for those. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll see you guys on the next one.